As a med student, I did not want to do ICU. I remember learning about the vent and being like, cool, that sounds boring. Don't want to know about it. I'm the Intense MD, a double board certified intensivist here to give you an inside look into the intensive care unit. On my Instagram a couple weeks ago, I asked for your questions and I made a Q&A that I posted last week. And one of the questions was, why did I pick intensive care is my specialty. And I said, this requires a longer video. So here it is. This video is going to have three separate parts. First is why did I decide to become a doctor in the first place? Why I decided to pick internal medicine as my residency specialty and why I decided to subspecialize in critical care. So the first part of the story, why did I even decide to go to medical school? Did I want to be a doctor my whole life? No, I didn't. When I was a kid, I didn't really consider it. And I remember at one point I said, no, that sounds like way too much school. So the exact point in my life where I decided, yes, I wanted to go to medical school. I don't remember. There was no major event that changed my mind. I remember getting to senior in high school and trying to decide where I wanted to go to college and what I wanted to major in. And that's when I started thinking, maybe I'll do pre-med. Part of the med school application and pre-med experience is getting clinical experiences and shadowing physicians. It wasn't until I started shadowing doctors that I realized that this is definitely what I wanted to do. I did a summer program with a cardiothoracic surgeon, that's an open heart surgeon, where he would take pre-med students and we would follow him around for the summer. He made different rotations for us with his other friend doctors. So we went through different specialties and saw what they did in their day to day. And I fell in love. I didn't care how much time I was spending at the hospital. Everything was very exciting to me. So I knew that this is what I wanted to do with my life. So I applied to medical school. Obviously I got into medical school. And a lot of times when you apply to medical school, they ask if you have any particular specialty you're leaning towards. I remember at that time I said, I think I want to be a radiation oncologist, but I wasn't 100% sure. And as I moved through school, I considered multiple different possibilities. So in medical school, you spend your first two years in the classroom learning anatomy, physiology, pathophysiology. In your third and fourth year, you do clerkships where you spend time in the hospital, you learn about different specialties, you do internal medicine, surgery, OBGYN, psych, peds as their core specialties, and then you spend time rotating through different subspecialties and electives to help you decide what you want to do. For a portion of time in medical school, I remember I thought I wanted to pursue surgery. I considered cardiothoracic surgery for myself. I did some research with a cardiothoracic surgeon, very briefly considered OB-GYN and pursuing gynonc. And then I came back around to internal medicine and my plan was to apply to internal medicine residency because I knew I wanted to do some type of some specialty, but I wasn't exactly sure what, and by the time I was graduating from medical school, I wanted to do hematology oncology. I applied for internal medicine residency. I matched at my first choice residency and started getting to know the hemonc faculty there, started to try to get into research projects there, and spent most of my first year of residency trying to build an application to apply for a hematology oncology fellowship program. Then my second year of residency rolled around and one of my first rotations was the CCU. And this is the coronary care unit where a lot of patients who are critically ill with heart diseases are. And soon after that, I had time in the medical ICU. So I had probably about four to six weeks total of ICU time and I really enjoyed it and I got really confused because I've been spending all of this time focusing my energy on building an application for a specialty that I thought I loved, I thought was definitely meant for me. And I was like, is this really what I want to do or am I just excited with this rotation? It definitely was a couple months of going back and forth, but I needed to decide soon, or I felt I needed to, to decide soon because the application process for fellowship was gonna start at the end of my second year. So I had to prepare an application, find faculty to write letters of recommendation, 
and and research what programs I wanted to apply to. And I remember as a med student, I did not want to do ICU. I remember learning about the vent and being like, cool, that sounds boring. Don't want to know about it. And my last rotation in med school was actually ICU. I was just like, okay, I'm here. I'm ready to graduate. So I didn't really put a lot of time and energy into learning a lot during that rotation. So what excited me about the intensive care unit in the first place? One, I like doing procedures. I had a feeling I was going to like doing procedures because I did consider surgery for a period of time. I like working with my hands and I like the feeling of physically doing something to benefit someone. And I found that very rewarding. When I was an intern, I didn't like procedures as much because they seemed overwhelming to me. Putting in central line has a lot of steps to it. I wasn't comfortable using the ultrasound and I was like, am I ever gonna learn this? By my second year, I was proficient at procedures. I was teaching other people how to do them. I was helping people troubleshoot. I like the critical thinking involved in the ICU. A lot of times we're making big decisions and also trying to diagnose. Sometimes people come to the ICU and we don't know exactly why they're critically ill. We have to do an investigation regarding why they're so sick. And that's one thing that led me to internal medicine is people come to the hospital and sometimes it's not as apparent why they're so sick. So you do need to be a little bit of a detective and figure out what's going on. I also liked talking to patients and their families at the end of life. It's not something that everybody's comfortable with. I like knowing what somebody's wishes are and being able to honor them. If somebody does not want to be put on life support, having that conversation about what the most likely things are and, and talking to families and having those connections when they're making these decisions and going through this difficult part in their life, I liked being there as a support person for them and helping them make big decisions. I like the teamwork of the critical care unit and a lot, there's a lot of different specialties in medicine that involve teamwork. Um, but in the ICU, there are so many people that are members of our team that help to take care of one individual patient. And something else, I didn't want to pick one particular system in the body, like the cardiovascular system or the renal system or the GI system. I wanted to know about the whole body and keep everything in mind because it all works together. I'm a very big picture person, so I think being able to step back and look at the whole patient and the whole situation you know, sometimes it's hard to take a step back in the ICU and say, you know, we're making little things better, but overall they're not getting better. And it's really important to be able to take a step back and communicate with patients, communicate with families what the overall picture looks like, because sometimes you can't see the forest from the trees. So 10 years ago, when I was applying to med school, I would have never picked myself to be an intensivist. I didn't think I had the right personality for it. Honestly, I didn't even know it was a choice. I didn't know it was a specialty. I didn't know that you can only work in the intensive care unit. Going into med school and even leaving med school probably would have picked a completely different profession for myself, but I'm so happy with my choice and I'm happy for the road it took me to get here. There's some people who know walking into med school, this is exactly what I want to do. This is why I want to do it. and they continue on that path. But for me, I considered so many different options and I'm happy that I weighed all my options and explored all options because I know in the end that I made the right choice for myself. And something else I wanna mention, cause I made it sound like I had to make all of these decisions really quick and I had to know. And I think when you're a student and you're heading towards the next stage in your life, you always feel pressure to tell somebody an answer when they ask you what you're gonna do next. Not knowing is okay, because I always felt pressured like, oh, I have to tell them something. I have to give them some answer. It's okay to not know what your next step is. And honestly, I made it sound like, you know, at the end of residency, I had to apply for fellowship. I could have taken some years and worked in internal medicine and then decided. That's not uncommon that people switch specialties, that people change their mind of what specialty they wanna go into. People might start and do internal medicine and then subspecialize years later. So if you're watching this, trying to figure out what your next steps are, maybe watch this video to figure out how you're gonna figure out what you're gonna do next. It's okay to 
take some time to explore. And something that I didn't realize in med school is there's a lot of specialties out there that I didn't even know existed. So I hope you enjoyed this story time video. If you have any other questions for me, you can leave them below. I run Q and A's pretty frequently over on my Instagram. So if you're not following me there, you can head over there at the intense MD. I try to answer questions either in my Instagram stories, in my Instagram reels or longer form content here. If you want to hear more story time format videos, let me know below. I'll be back on Tuesday with another video.